Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Welcome to today's message from Harvest Chapel International. We believe the message will be a blessing to you as you imbibe God's truth. God bless you. Jesus loves us so much because the church is the bride of Christ. And I'm going to talk about taking care of the bride. He loves us so much that he will do anything for the church. He will do anything for the church. And I want to count yourself blessed for being a child of God because you are very special to God. The thoughts that he has for you are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a hope and a future. Tell yourself the future is bright. There are good days ahead of me. And God is taking me into those good days. Amen. So recently I was just thinking, meditating on the word and having some discussions with some friends. And Holy Ghost asked me a very simple question. Do you know what it means to take care of the bride? He asked me, do you know what it means to be given a wife to take care of her? That somebody is going somewhere, he's traveling, and he calls you and tells you, I'm traveling, I'll be back. When I'm coming, me, myself, I don't know. But I want you to take off my wife for me till I come. And he leaves. Holy Ghost told me, think about this thing. As a leader in a church, managing the church, playing a role in a church, do you know that what you're managing, you're managing the bride of Christ? That department you are managing, you are managing the bride of Christ. That brother you are interacting with, that sister you are interacting with, he or she is the bride of Christ. And Jesus is expecting all of us to take care of this bride and prepare her till he comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if we are talking about working well together, we are working well together to take care of the wife of Jesus. And this is a very huge assignment. We thank God for his grace and the spirit that is left with us. But it is not a small assignment. It's a privilege, yes, to take care of the wife of Jesus. The king of kings, the lord of lords. The one who laid down his life for the salvation of mankind. He says, take care of my wife for me. But it is a huge assignment. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. Or I have espoused you to one husband that may present that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Paul, he is saying that I am jealous with godly jealousy, that I am preparing the church, managing her, seeing to her welfare. Making sure that everything goes well for her. Because I have to present her as a chaste, a virgin, spotless, unto the husband. And here Paul is standing in as a father who is preparing a daughter to be married. 
And that is where we found ourselves as the people of God, as leaders and as, as workers in the house of God. This is where we find ourselves that whatever we do, let us have at the back of our minds that we are preparing the church to be married to Christ. The church has been engaged to Christ and Christ is coming one day to have a wedding ceremony. And the church is the bride of Christ. Revelation chapter 19 from verse 11. You and I, whatever we do in the house of God, wherever we find ourselves, let us always have this at the back of our minds that whatever we do, we are preparing the church for Jesus. Verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamp is come and his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, write, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the lamp. And he said unto me, these are the true, the true sayings of God. Christ is coming to carry the church as his bride. And you and I, it is our duty to work together so well to prepare ourselves for that wedding ceremony. Whatever we find ourselves, whatever we do, we should have this at the back of our minds. That we are working to build the church for Christ. And that is why when you read Hebrews chapter 11, some people had to lay down their lives. They went through all the trouble because they are working to prepare the bride. I was recently reading about some of the things that the men of old went through. And I was amazed some of the difficulties they went through just to work to prepare the bride. I read about this man who, when they caught him preaching the gospel, they removed all his clothes, they turned him upside down, his head was down, his legs were up, they opened his legs and they cut him with a sword into two, they opened him apart. What has he done? He was working to prepare the bride for Jesus. You may go through some challenges, you may go through some difficulties, but always have at the back of our minds that whatever we are doing, we are preparing ourselves for a certain marriage feast. We have to prepare ourselves wholly unblameable, without blemish, for the master to come and take the church away. When you look at Philippians chapter 2, from verse 14, do all things without murmurings and disputings that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Holding for the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Do all things without memories and disputings. He knows what we are up to. He knows what we are supposed to be doing. And he knows that there are times that it could be difficult. There are times that you have to go through some sacrifices. There are times that you have to let go some benefits. There are times that you have to go through some pain. But he says that in all these things, do it without memories and disputings. 15. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. That's why wherever you find yourself, it doesn't matter the crookedness of the place. Shine as light because you are a bride of Christ. Preparing yourself for the master to come and marry you. 15, 16. Holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. That I have done a good work. I have prepared this woman very well. I have labored. I have done my best. She now looks good for the master to take her away. 17. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of the Lord, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. 
But I trust the Lord Jesus to send Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who naturally cares for your state. Do we naturally care for the church? I have no man like-minded. I have no man like-minded who naturally, he doesn't struggle to care for the church. He doesn't struggle to care for that brother. He doesn't struggle to care for that sister. It is not painful. It is not a struggle. Someone who naturally cares. He does not destroy what is of the church. He does not mess things up. He manages the finances very well. He manages the women very well. He manages the men very well. Everything about him is perfect because he naturally cares. Natural. Can we say to ourselves that me, I naturally care about what is of God. I naturally care about the choir. I naturally care about the ushers. I naturally care about the prayer department. I naturally care about the children's service or the children's department. I naturally care. He says that I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. Naturally care. That when the thing is going bad, he is troubled. When the thing is going bad, he is not happy. When the thing is going bad, he will pray and pray and pray until the thing changes. He naturally cares. For I have no man like-minded who would naturally care for your state. Because we together as a team, we are preparing ourselves for the marriage ceremony. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 17. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as if I were foolishly in this confidence of boasting, seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take you, if a man exhort himself if a man smite you on the face i speak as concerning reproach as though we had been weak how be it worried soever any is bold i speak foolishly i am bold also are there hebrews so am i are there israelites so am i are they the seed of abraham so am i are they ministers of christ i speak as a fool i am more in labors more abundant in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in debt often of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Five times was beaten thirty nine times. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Do you know what an what a, what an iron rod is? It was beaten. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys of it, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the hidden, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without, that which come upon me daily, the care of all the churches. He was not bothered about his credentials. He was not moved by the pain. What concerns him is the church. That the church will do well. That people will join the church. Souls will be saved in the church. That the church will grow. That everything will go well for the church. One thing that bothered Paul the most, it was not the pain. It was not the imprisonment. It was not the shipwrecks. It was not the beatings. It was not his credentials. He was a lawyer, but I mean lawyer par excellence. It was not that position. But one thing that bothered him the most was that the church will do well. That the people who name the name of the church will do well. That everything that concerns the church will do well. That was his care. What bothered him most the care of the churches. Do we naturally care about the
about the church. As we are talking about working well together, do we naturally care? Hallelujah. And let me scale it a little. When we go to the home, the home is another church. Do you really care about your partner? Do you naturally care about the pain, the hustle, the struggle your partner goes through to make things work for the home? Do you really feel the pain? Or she's like some slave bee. He's like an errand boy being in the house. People treat their husband like errand boys and treat their wives like some slave girls, some house girls. Do you naturally care? One brother complained and said, when his wife receives calls and he's there, he talks, he laughs, he's excited. But when he's out of home and he calls the wife, hello, uh -huh, what's he saying? Uh -huh. Okay, 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 what am I busy? And the man said, why is that me when I call you, you don't give me that excitement? But when somebody else calls you, you are full of laughter, you are excited, you are happy. What is the difference? Are we sure we naturally care for the people that God brings to us, the people in our homes, our spouses? Do we naturally care? Let me tell you something, a little digression. First Peter chapter 3, verse 6. The brothers who are contending and struggling. Let me show you something here. Even as I obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as strong as ye do well, and are not afraid with any, any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell well with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto weaker verses, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. There are times that you are struggling, contract is not working, things are not working, things are falling off. Ask yourself, how am I treating her? She could have the answer. Things are just falling apart and you don't understand it. Check this, that your prayers be not hindered. Why is the prayer not working? Why are things falling apart? Why are things not working? Check it again, revise your notes. Maybe there is something wrong. And as for this one, it doesn't matter the number of days you fast. The answer is cherish the wife. Once you treat her well, heavens are opened. The brothers who have been beating your wives, no wonder you are struggling in life. You better repent. When you go home, give her a good treat. Hallelujah change because it won't help you amen <laughs> so naturally caring for what is of god there are times that you know it's difficult there are times that it's hard there are times that you have to give there are times that you have to pray fast do all those things that you have to do because you naturally care there are times that you go through a lot of discouragement, you go through a lot of troubles, a lot of trials, a lot of temptations, hunger, thirst, fast things, difficult times, money is not there, things are rough. But one thing that I know we should do is to naturally always care for the church. That is where the answer is. Hallelujah. Now, time that look in 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 in, in First Samuel chapter thirty, there was a time David went to war with his soldiers. When they came back, some people had raided their camp. They had, and it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and spit in Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire and their wives, their sons, and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. They felt so devastated, so beaten down, and they, they cried until the power to cry was not even there. 
as if that was not enough. And David's two wives were taken captives. Ahinoam the Jezreelites and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed for the people speak of stoning him. We have all gone to war. We have come. Me, my two wives, they are gone. You, your one wife is gone. Our children, everything is gone. The place has been bent down. We have cried. Ah, now we don't have even the power to cry again. After that, you, you are coming to stone me on top. Meanwhile, we all went to fight. You have come to, there are times it happens like that. You get so pissed with everybody around you. You are so angry with everybody around you. But there are people who are going through more pain than you are. And they are praising the Lord. They are praising the Lord. You think everybody is an enemy. Because the soul of all the people was grie grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. When it gets to those times, one thing you have to do is to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord his God. Lift some songs of worship. Lift some songs of praise. Sing some worship songs unto the Lord. And lift your spirit up. The more you lift your spirit up, the more you are fired up for the way forward. But if you sit down and complain and mama and complain and mama, you start having high blood pressure. It won't help you. So Bible says that, and David encouraged himself. He did not allow the threats of the people to beat him down. He did not allow the words of the people to destroy him. He was discouraged himself. His people were equally discouraged. Everybody was down. Everybody was crying. Everybody was devastated. But one thing David did was to encourage himself. To be able to work together, let us learn to encourage ourselves. If nobody is speaking peacefully and speaking words of love and speaking words of encouragement to you, don't worry. If they are threatening to stone you, don't worry. If they are insulting you, don't worry. They don't understand you. Encourage yourself. Hallelujah. When you encourage yourself, your mind is alert. Your spirit is revived. You can think straight and find a solution for the way forward. But if you allow the condition to beat you down and you are crying like everybody is crying and you are disturbed like everybody is disturbed, you start deteriorating and start going down. Encourage yourself. And when David encouraged himself, look at what happened. He found a solution. And David said to Abiathar the priest, I am like son. I pray thee, bring me hither the effort. And Abiata brought hither the effort to David. And David inquired of the Lord. Because he encouraged himself, he had the energy to go to God and ask him, Father, what should I do? This is the condition. This is the situation. What should I do in this circumstance? And God told him, pursue, overtake, and he shall without fail recover all. Encourage yourself. Hallelujah. Don't let the situation beat you down. At times it gets tough. Your money is locked up in that financial institution that has been closed down. But Jesus is still Lord. Hallelujah. All of us, we are victims, but Jesus is still Lord. Encourage yourself and move on. Hallelujah. Let us try to hold on to one another and encourage one another. Let us move on because together we can move forward. Together we can get results. Together we can get things done. In, in Isaiah chapter 41, there's something interesting there. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 6. They help everyone his neighbor and everyone said to his brother, be of good courage. Say to your brother and sister, be of good courage. Be of good courage. Fear not. The Lord is on your case. Be of good courage. It says, they help everyone, his neighbor, and everyone said to his brother, be of good courage. Don't give up. Be strong and have a good courage. Don't give up. Verse 6, verse 7. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, and he that smooths with the hammer, him that, that smooth the anvil, saying, it is ready for soldering, and he fastened it to the, with the nails that it should not be moved. They connected to each other. Choir director, ushering director, prayer director, every one of them connected. 
husband, wife, connected together with your children, be encouraged one another and said to each other, be of good courage. Be of good courage. Be strong. Don't give up. Rise up. Fight on. It is possible. You will get there. You will achieve it. You will overtake. You will recover. Be of good courage. Because we are preparing the bride for the master. Be of good courage. And don't let the situation throw you down. They will happen. But rise above it. And God will come through for you. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening to the message. Visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org. Send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.